Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Patriot Smoothie here to summarize day 29 of the trial of Tamara Leach and Chris Barber. It is now day two of the defense's case, and it was another day of heavy legal arguments and back and forth. Mr. Eric Granger for Tamara Leach finishing up his presentation this morning, and then Miss Magus for Chris Barber rising to make her case on behalf of Christopher Barber. Now, it's really interesting as we're getting into this, as both are currently making an application to dismiss the Carter application from the crown where evidence against one of the accused would go against the other accused which one says will count against the other so in this case the vast majority of evidence is against chris barber and the crown makes this carter application with the intention to hope that the evidence so-called presented in the trial so far will apply to Tamara Leach because if you've been paying attention to the last 27 days of the Crown's case and the 16 witnesses they called there was scant a mention of Tamara Leach there was there is barely anything at, at all that exists against her so in theory if the directed verdict goes through and the counsel for Tamara Leach gets their way and dismisses this, then there would be very little evidence left against Tamara Leach. She would be effectively acquitted, but I don't think the Crown would let it go. The Crown would continue with whatever little bits and pieces they have is even what they have now is hardly to be called the case now you're going to have to forgive me i've been very busy with my personal affairs so i'm going to have to refer to some notes and i'm not in the courtroom this week i'm dealing with a lot of stuff and i can't really go into it but it's um it's a lot and so i want to just give a shout out to the democracy fund and aiden helmer of post media and other people who are in the courtroom uh maintaining the the channel of the open court principle and letting us all know what's going on in there i wish i could be in there reporting for you but unfortunately due to my personal circumstances i can't so uh, i just want to shed some share some appreciation for tdf canada and for aiden helmer and other people out there i link to them most days on my social media so you can follow their reporting live and of course i'm not in the courtroom so this has to come from somewhere it is coming from somewhere I, i'm not materializing out of thin air so credit where credit is due to all the people above so thank you very much uh, for your continued dedication to this and let's get to it so the the most interesting thing uh, that happened, well, the initial interesting thing that happened today was a video where Tamara Leach was asking people to keep the love in their heart and to show respect to police officers and to pray and for forgive them. And that's really remarkable because at the time she was being arrested or about to be arrested, there was word that they were going to be arresting her and uh, she had just concluded or was about to do the press conference where I believe she was asked about what we do if you're arrested arbitrarily and she said, this is my hill. But I remember watching that video in this trial and you could tell that she was honest, that she had a genuine intention in those words, that she really felt that people should pray for the police officers. This is not the... This is not the thinking of a criminal person to to be so considerate and caring about law enforcement, especially when they feel that they may be arbitrarily arrested. This seems like someone who's generally concerned about the state of Canada to me. And I don't know if that's the legal argument that was being made there, but that's certainly my interpretation of Miss Leach as a woman, as a Canadian citizen. She's tremendously honest, and full of integrity, and a genuine person. And, and it's, it's really interesting that there was no evidence at all that she ever broke, uh, she, she never broke the law during, when she was arrested, she was kind, she was peaceful, and somebody screamed to her, hold the line, she said it back, as we heard from Miss, uh, sorry, Justice Heather Perkins McVeigh on day 28, hold the line could mean many things to many people, it could mean uh, stay true to your conviction, so it really means very little, however, it's shocking how much of the Crown's case apparently rests on that, on that phrase, and again, just more mention of that, that there can't be, you can't make anything of that because it means anything. It's too much to speculate. She, her behavior indicates that she was lawful, that she was considerate and caring. She certainly doesn't have a guilty mind, a mens rea. She was doing what she thought was right. And uh, as the case law says, there's no, there's no time limit on a protest as long as it was, as long as it's le legal and it's not violent. So a protest is a protest is a protest, and there's no expiry on that. There just there just isn't. It's it, it, it's the, the, we have the Declaration of the Emergencies Act, but the Emergencies Act itself says that it has to respect the Canadian Bill of Rights and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which explicitly protect Canadians' rights to protest and assembly. And even Justice McLean's order, uh, the injunctions, the horn honking injunctions, said that the protesters were at liberty to continue a lawful, peaceful protest so long as they didn't honk. And again, no other terms added into that, considering all the other complaints we've heard from the six. 
16 crown witnesses none of those some of those were party to that to that injunction and never added any of the the other terms that they were complaining about to it which is very interesting because hindsight is always 2020 i think now <sighs> For the Carter application, there has to be the common unlawful design. And again, I'm a layperson, so take everything with I, what I say with a grain of salt, but it's the best that as I understand it. There has to be the common unlawful design where the two parties have an agreement where they're going to do something inherently unlawful. Coming to Ottawa to protest, to provide fuel to trucks for protest, to uh, start a GoFundMe, none of that is inherently unlawful. So how could there be a common unlawful design? Where is the specific agreement? When was it made? Uh, the, the information, the charges are just so wide spectrum on their dates. The Crown has not provided a specific example of this conspiracy, of this of this common unlawful design when the agreement was reached between the co-accused Tamara Leach and Chris Barber. Again, Tamara Leach's counsel seems to be approaching this with a directed verdict in mind with their application, whereas I, I think that Miss Magus may be approaching it a little bit differently. But either way, I think the effect will be the same when, when the Carter application is dismissed. What evidence remains against Tamara Leach is very, very little. However, again, I think that this is going to continue on to the very, very end. Nobody is going to let anything go in this one. We can see even in the lower, in, in other cases concerning Convoy, where <laughs> it just doesn't end. It just doesn't end, folks. And, and certainly very unusual when you talk to legal experts about what is common practice in these sort of uh, charges and, and what's going on and what's normally done uh, doesn't seem to be being done at this point. Why that is anyone's guess, but certainly the common operating procedures are not uh, are not at play here. Certainly that would be the interpretation. That would be what, what it appears to be uh, from the outside looking in. So I, anyways, I just think that even if the Carter application is dismissed, which I think it has a very good chance of being dismissed, the case law is very solid. The legal arguments are very solid. The Crown will continue. They're not going to stay the charges against Tamara Leach. They're going to go with what at that point would be like, I can't, I've struggled to think. None of the witnesses testified that they had any communication with Tamara Leach. I mean, maybe, maybe they were at a meeting where she was there, but the notes were, were bad or whatever. It just, it's not enough to do anything with in a court of law where you have to prove, prove the offenses beyond a reasonable doubt. When you have no evidence, you can't prove things beyond a reasonable doubt. That's, that's kind of a given, isn't it? So yeah, there's simply a lack of evidence <laughs> the court could could infer a common unlawful design. There's too much requirement for speculation and the inference is not to a common unlawful design. The inference is to that people who have conscience, who were working with lawyers, who were uh, doing a protest for something they fundamentally believed in and who were explicitly non-violent. That's the inference. Where's the common unlawful design? Where's the inherently illegal intention of any of that? It just doesn't exist, folks. And uh, so, so Mr. Granger did uh, rest his application on that. Now the Crown at some point is going to get to do a reply. And I think that the defense will then again get to reply to the reply. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it seemed as though Mr. Granger had more to add uh, based on a, uh, a something that was passed during one of the breaks to Miss Magus and possibly to other counsel as well. I'm not too sure. I'll keep my eyes and ears pierced to that. But that's that's an interesting development. So yeah, again, it's just, it's, it's just there on every level of the Carter application, every test, every rung of the Carter application, the common unlawful design, the furtherance, uh, et cetera, and so on et al. They all fail. Every single level of the test for the Carter application that the Crown has presented fails. Now, the, there's no evidence for it. There's no evidence to support a Carter application. That's the point here. It just doesn't. And <laughs> It's, it's uh, why is this still going? I don't know, but I, we know why, because the common operating procedure is out the window. Why? That's a good question. That's a question that deserves some, some, some inquiry, some, some thought and some attention, but, uh, there I may. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Miss Magus said that it's unclear when the agreement was committed. Uh, when did it happen? Like there's no evidence from the crown of when this common unlawful design was agreed, agreed to by the parties. There has to be a solid understanding between the two of them, the agency, the understanding of the agreement that they are doing this unlawful thing together. Having a GoFundMe is not an unlawful thing. Having a giving trucks fuel is not an unlawful thing. It's not inherently unlawful when they decided to do it in January and whenever it came to be. And, and even the police guiding protesters into Ottawa, 
showed that it was not an inherently illegal event. The police would not allow trucks to park on Wellington for an inherently illegal event. So you can't use that argument. So where did the conspiracy actually form? When is the genesis of this common unlawful design? This is very, very important. As the police guided the trucks in, uh, communicated with Christopher Barber and other people to get these trucks in uh, on the S jam on Wellington and, and, and Barber working with these people early on, even, you know, very early on in text messages with officer uh, batch trying to figure out and work with unresponsive drivers that they were having a little bit of difficulty with and other things and he was cooperative from the get-go and miss lich and mr barber were not uh, a symbiotic pair they were not one and the same they were not of the same mind they had disagreements they had different things they had uh you know they're there for generally the same reason as most people were uh because of the restrictions but besides that where is this common unlawful design that they are a party to where they're in agreement to furtherance of that illegal un uh, inherently illegal uh, common unlawful design conspiracy it just doesn't exist and that's important that you need that foundation to move forward on that you just do and uh, again no 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 violence <laughs> no no nothing uh, the the definition of a riot you know you need to have violence you need to have tumultuous behavior you need to have the the risk of it just didn't exist during the combo they were very self-policing um certainly during my experiences there i didn't see anything like that of that nature i saw just people who were happy to be together after so long it was canada day in the winter and much more jubilant i'd say even there was people of every corner of canada there um everyone was in a good mood being taken care of and even the people who disagreed they they were allowed to do their thing. Nobody was interfering with them. It's just ridiculous that this continues. Again, there's, there's, it's not illegal to try and keep protesting. Look at what's happening in the country right now. Protests are ongoing. There's, there's all kinds of things that happen all the time around the country, different varieties of timelines of protests. It's not inherently illegal. How, how exactly the police are guiding them in that's very important and, and then there was even the discussion where I, I i think that miss officer Bache said to chris barber that it would be a good idea to do slow rolls around the city so that even at that point the protest was an unlawful that's an important detail too we see every step of the way even in the ops mission statement that i mentioned the other day where they said that it to support legal lawful protest the justice justice mclean's uh, order the protesters are at liberty to continue a lawful protest. It just goes on and on and on where this inherent unlawful conspiracy does not exist. It just doesn't exist. The evidence uh, uh, towards the information in, at large is weak. The evidence towards this conspiracy to this common unlawful design is non-existent. It's non-existent. That's, that's, that was the majority of what the message of today was. I'm going to, I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep this. Uh, I'll be back for day 30. I believe it will be day 30 tomorrow, day three of the defense's case. Thanks as always for listening, guys. Again, today was all about that common unlawful design, the Carter application, the motion to dismiss that by the defense, Eric Granger for Tamara Leach finishing up, and Miss Magus for Chris Barber beginning. It's going to be very interesting. And again, the lawyers were involved. The police, they, they were trying to work with police. There was nothing inherently unlawful against about this protest at all. And whether you disagreed with it or not, that doesn't change the fact that it was not inherently unlawful. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Like the video, it helps a lot. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. I'm Patriot Smoothie.